Welcome to Pathways Magazine. This program is designed to give you a whole bunch of tools to help you empower your life and to go one step beyond where you are right now. In this episode, we're going to speak to a spirit whisperer to find out about the spirits that are around us. We're also going to have a look at music therapy to find out the healing benefits of that. But right now, Bev Brock is going to be talking about past lives. Today we have the pleasure of talking to Maggie Brownlee about past life therapy. Now, for some people this could be a bit controversial, but we're going to go there. It's an interesting thing that about half of the world's population accepts past lives reincarnation as part of their culture, their religion. But here in the Western world, things are a little different and people get a little bit spooked by the concept that we have actually may have lived before. Uh, it's an interesting thing that um, even back in the Bible... Uh, you know, Jesus. We talk about John the Baptist, and and he was in the Bible said to be Elias of old, who people expected to return. There are other references to uh, that philosophy that a lot of the um, beings that are written about in the Bible actually existed before. But about 500 years after Jesus' birth, they the the power brokers in the church decided at the time to eliminate the concept and it was in a, a doctrine of Constantinople and their purpose for doing it was to say that we had one lifetime, one chance to get to heaven and the only way to get there, to get to God, was to go through the, the ministers of the religion. But they missed a few spots in the Bible. Now today we're not looking at past lives reincarnation as a curiosity factor and it doesn't matter whether you were Cleopatra, King Henry VIII, when, that's not what we're looking at people have come to understand that we have past life patterns and when you have difficulties in your life, you can actually go back, examine the patterns that you've had in previous lifetimes and correct the problem at the root cause. Now, Maggie has made a career of this. So, Maggie, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for talking to us. Pleasure. What is it that got you into this as a, a career in the first place? Oh, I stumbled upon it. I was practicing as a kinesiologist and I kept getting results that said go back, go back further and nobody could help me. It wasn't in any books and the teachers all thought I was a bit crackers. So I had to, I used my clairvoyance, which I've always had, and the, the dear guides on the other side taught me and eventually I got it. They're very patient and um, now I do what I do quite easily with their assistance. Which is fantastic. Now Maggie actually has a background in more traditional Western medicine. So for her to, to break out and to go into something completely uh, alternative, complementary, has been quite a big move. So people that come to you for assistance, do you find that some of them come out of curiosity in the first place? The people that come to see me have come through recommendation and usually they've tried everything. And If they've got a physical problem or, or um, an obstacle in their life that they just can't get through, and often they've, they've been everywhere, and I'm usually the last stop. <laughs> <laughs> and when you say you're the last stop, when you work with them, you know, what is it that you try and help them see? How does it work for them? Well, um, what I do is I just read their history. Um, it's just something that I can do, and I just, I can usually, well I do, there's no usually about it, I just go to the the, um, the time, the experience that they had where there was a major issue that they've taken on as their truth. It's, it's like the seeds that you sow um, in the beginning of time whenever that might be for each of, each of us and the seeds grow into the person that we've become today. So instead of seeing it just in this lifetime, you see that those seeds were sown mm -hmm. maybe many lifetimes ago. I don't work with this lifetime. It doesn't really get me anywhere. I need to go to the history, to where the brick walls were put up, where the fears and the illusions have become sort of like a concrete. Mm. And each lifetime or each time we come here, or each visit, whatever you want to call it, we keep doing the same things. <laughs> what you're saying is that we're on this treadmill Absolutely. and we can't break the patterns of the past until we uh, get an insight and recognise that we are trapped in a pattern seems to be like that. When mm. the, the universe have always said to me, they don't call them lives, they just say, call it rotations. We, we come here, we do have an experience, we do what we've written to come here to do and then we go home. Right. So you said before that your guides give you this insight. So I presume that in this, when you're doing your work, 
you actually have the gift of insight of, um, well, the ability to see what has happened in other people's lives. So in your case, you don't go through uh, past life therapy that involves regression? No, it's like looking at a movie yeah. or a video. I just see it and I feel it. And when I, when I talk to the client and I say, look, um, I can see this, this a part of you and this is the experience, and they immediately get it and they say, that's my life now. Right. And so then I, we, we talk about it and, and I say to them, and what do you think this part of you needs? And they always say, someone to love me. <laughs> so it comes back to the need for love. Oh, now every, I, every, every time. Every time. Yeah. I have to say that I had uh, an experience with Maggie. Uh, about 20 years ago, I first got curious about past lives because of the, some research I'd seen in a program on television. And, uh, and I had always been curious, so I, I made an appointment and with this woman and um, I was staggered by what she told me and, and it, I could feel the truth of that in every cell of my body. There was no bit of what she said that didn't ring true and she had never met me before. And so I've had a long time to research a lot of this and, and when I went to Maggie there were some issues going on in my life. And I have to say to you, Maggie sat there and she said to me, I don't work with this lifetime. I thought, this isn't the problem. I've got the problems now. But she went back and told me the patterns and it was quite frightening. It was actually as it is today. So do you find that people always see the relevance of what you're coming up with or are there sometimes when people just don't relate? No, they see it. The truth is the truth. And it hits home and there's no judgement and it's pretty relaxed so... There's only me and them. That's true. So those that have a strong Christian belief, are they less willing to accept and, and work with what you come up with? I, I don't see very, very devout Christian people. They don't come in the first no, place? They don't. Okay. Which is, is, a sad, is sad, but they, everybody has their own way of resolving their issues. Mm -hmm. So once you show them the pattern... Do you then talk to them about the skills they need to change the pattern? Oh yes, once, knowledge is power. Once they understand why they feel a certain way or, or why they always do the same sort of thing, um, once you know it, you can, you can often... Uh, and the work that I do, I, I do do work on that part of them that's holding the fear. Mm. So that is often very different for them. They can then do things quite differently, a lot easier. So does your work, is it evolving or is it a standard practice that you stick to? Is it a changing? Oh, it changes, it evolves. The more work I do on myself, the more I can do and the deeper I can go. You know, look, I, I find it absolutely fascinating and, and what I would encourage is for people to broaden their horizons, to understand if you've got problems in your life today, there are many ways to solve them. Eventually the answer comes within you. It's your choice as to how you go about it. Seek different ways, go within, understand that you have the potential, the ability to change what's happening in your life but you have to be willing to explore. And people like Maggie, and thank you so much Maggie for coming and talking to us today, people like Maggie can assist you to resolve issues in your life. So I would encourage you if you're seeking extra information and you're searching for answers, please visit the Pathways website. For more information about Pathways magazine, you can visit our website, which is www.pathways33.com. All of the guests that appear on our show will be online for you to get access to. Stay tuned, because after the break, we're going to have a closer look at music therapy.